Hello, good morning, welcome to another day. Uh, we're going to continue our little study in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, it's a wonderful letter. Uh, one commentator puts it like this. In 1 Thessalonians, we open a window onto a newly planted church in the middle of the first century AD. It tells us how it came into being, what the apostle taught it, what were its strengths and weaknesses, its theological and moral problems, and how it was spreading the gospel. And so we have this church in Thessalonica that had been started by the Apostle Paul. Uh, he had travelled there, uh, having crossed over into Europe in response to a vision that he received from a man from Macedonia. And so he, Luke, Silas and Timothy had crossed into Europe to begin their missionary travels in Europe. Uh, and this is Paul's second missionary journey, by the way. Uh, and uh, he arrives. First of all, he goes to Philippi, preaches the gospel. Then he, Silas and Timothy, continue west and go to Thessalonica, this big strategic city uh, where he spends three Saturdays preaching at the synagogue on the Sabbath. Uh, then he's thrown out of the synagogue and probably spends a few more weeks preaching in the marketplace and teaching some uh, the, the pagans and the Gentiles who come to Christ as well in that city. And they establish a church in very short order, but then they have to move on very quickly. And we read in Acts chapter uh, 17 that the Apostle Paul is forced to move on quickly because of a mob that uh, gathers to persecute the Apostle Paul and his colleagues. They're working as a team, by the way, and I love the fact that they're working as a team. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I love working in teams as well. And what we find is that though Paul is there, it tells us in Acts 17 verse 5 that the Jews were jealous and so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob and started a riot in the city. So we've got this violent insurrection, never heard of that before, taking place in this city. There's this sort of, they rush to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas. They can't find Paul and Silas, but they drag Jason instead uh, before the city council, before the city officials, uh, accusing them of usurping Caesar and uh, as a result the crowds join in with this and um, so then Jason and the others are put on bail and let go but uh, Paul that very next day has to leave the city uh, with his colleagues and he goes on to Berea where he is well received of course um, but then more troublemakers arrive from, from Thessalonica and so he has to move on again and he goes to Athens uh, and then he sails to Corinth where he spends 18 months teaching in Corinth and it's in Corinth that he receives a report from Timothy. Timothy has visited the church in Thessalonica and he comes back and he tells Paul that the church is still standing strong despite the difficulties that they're facing despite the infancy of their faith, despite the fact that they haven't had the Apostle Paul with them and they're on their own without a leader and they've been uh, just sort of put into the deep end and yet they are standing strong in their faith because this gospel has taken root in their lives and it's a powerful gospel that has transformed them and therefore the church is still going strong, albeit that there are some issues that have to be dealt with, which is partly why Paul is going to write this letter to them. But it's just worth noting, isn't it, that um, there's opposition and it's not surprising. I mean, if we read through Thessalonians, you'll find that Paul says, you know, you guys are facing opposition and these Christians are probably quite wobbly. They're new Christians. They only had Paul with them for a few weeks. They've not had a lot of time to receive this message. Then they're cast adrift on their own, facing opposition. 
And you would think that they would start to question and doubt and struggle with their identity in Christ uh, and, uh, and that they would be quite wobbly and insecure. But it's worth noting, isn't it, that, you know, whenever we do invade enemy territory, uh, there is probably going to be a backlash. And that's the case uh, with Paul here. Paul is going into Europe for the first time. And immediately in Philippi, he faces opposition. Then in Thessalonica, he faces op opposition. Then in Berea, he faces opposition because they are doing something new in Europe. They are preaching the gospel. And so they're, they're invading darkness. And so the darkness is pushing back. And that can be our experience as well, that as we do things for God and as we push forward in serving God and as we perhaps reach out and invite someone to Alpha or as we pray or as we try to do good things or the right things, that there will be discouragement and there will be things that will try to put us off and try to stop us in our tracks. But nevertheless, we need to be confident that God is more than able to help us during those times. And so we find in 1 Thessalonians that Paul gives this greeting to the church here. And it's a wonderful greeting. It's a standard greeting, but it's been Christianized and it's full of real theological depth. He says, Paul, Silas and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. So he says that they are the church of God. In, Thessalon in Thessalonians, who are in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's quite unusual for the apostle to say that they are in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Normally he would say that they are in Christ. That's a big theme of Paul's, that we have this vital, organic union with Christ, that we are in Christ, that we are hidden in Christ, that what happened to Christ happens to us, that he died and we died with him, that he rose and we rose with him, that he is seated now uh, and we're seated with him, that he receives the favour of God and so do we because we're in Christ and so what is Christ's is ours, his inheritance is our inheritance. That's a wonderful thing. We are in Christ. But here it tells us that we are in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it kind of just adds to the level of security that these Christians can feel. And perhaps Paul knows that they are feeling insecure. And so he wants to give them security in the midst of all the turmoil, in the midst of all the uncertainty. I want you to know that you are secure because you are in God, the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul puts it in Colossians, just a verse, a chapter before this one, he says to them there in Colossians 3 that our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. That's our position. We're hidden with Christ in God. And just one other reference in John chapter 10 and uh, verse 27 or verse 28, Jesus says, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. And so there's this wonderful security. We're in Christ. We're in God the father who has Christ in his hands and we are in Christ and Christ and the Father are one and no one can snatch us out of his hands. And so as Paul writes this letter to this young church, this wobbly, insecure church, he's able to say, you can be strong. You are being strong. You are standing firm because you are in God the Father and you are in Christ Jesus. 
So let's just pray. Lord, we thank you for our security in you. We thank you with all the turmoil and uncertainty of life. We can be certain and confident that you are with us, that we are in you, that no one can snatch us out of your hands. And so help us to be strong today and to be confident, knowing that you are mightily with us and for us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Jax is joining in with the Amen. <laughs>